Hi guys, thanks for joining me. So today's video is going to be about trying to conceive, or in other words, getting pregnant. Um, I am a registered midwife and also a registered nurse in the UK. Um, and I'm also pregnant myself, 28 weeks at present. So I have personal experience as well as um, kind of professional experience to um, impart on you guys. So if your aim is to get pregnant, you're trying to conceive, you wanna get pregnant as quickly as possible, then this is definitely the video for you, so keep on watching. So first off, I just wanna say that any advice or information I give does not replace your personal medical advice. Um, this is just general advice through um, things that I've learned through my job, but also a lot of it through the internet. It is available to everyone, all of this information. I'm just kind of relaying it to you, and I think because of my background in midwifery and in nursing, in some ways I'm able to interpret or understand things even better, so hopefully I can help you guys understand it better. So there's nothing more natural than getting pregnant, reproducing, making babies, but some people find it really, really difficult. Lots of couples struggle. Um, the NHS uh, website actually says that within a year, 80 to 90% of couples will get pregnant if they're having regular sex, which is kind of crucial. Um, so, you know, the odds are definitely in your favour, and if you don't know of any reason as to why you might be struggling to get pregnant, I don't think there's any use in just worrying about the potential that you can't. I think it's really easy for people to do that, but it's not going to give you any benefit, and we know that stress is not helpful in any way towards these, um, these goals that we're trying to achieve. So I've come up with a little list, I have my notebook here. Um, just to kind of keep me on track and just to go through everything that I found really useful and what helped me and then to hopefully kind of relay that back to yourselves. So my first piece of advice to um, yourselves, your couple, when you're thinking about having a baby is mentally preparing for this. It's definitely a big conversation that you need to have. Um, you've got to remember that this isn't just a baby that you're having, it's a human being that's going to grow, turn into an adult. You're going to have to be responsible for them for at least 18 years. You're potentially going to be having several children um, and it's going to affect every part of your life, financially, emotionally, um, mentally, everything is going to be affected. Um, so it's a really, really important conversation to have. It's not something that I think you should go into lightly. You both need to be on board with it um, and just make sure that you're kind of both on the same wavelength. So once you've done that, the first step I would say is coming off your contraception, whether that's the pill, um, implant, injection, coil, lots of the um, different forms of contraception leave you fertile f straight away afterwards. Personally, I was using the implant and I had it removed in July um, 2019 and I kind of let my body settle down for a little bit before we actually tried to conceive. But I do know that the implant supposedly allows your facility to return, return instantly. Um, I have a, a friend actually who got pregnant before she even had a period after having her implant out, so it definitely does happen. Next I would say you need to get to know your cycles. There's lots of ways to do this. You can use apps, for example. I personally used Ovia Fertility. I found it really, really helpful. So it looks a bit like this, um, and you can go through on the on the calendar and pop in the your you know your last period. It also allows you to track lots of symptoms, and I would really really recommend using a cycle tracker, especially before you actually try conceiving. That's what I personally did, and I think that's what helped us so much was that I knew exactly when um, things were happening within my cycle, so that we could plan properly and effectively. And you know it did lead to us getting pregnant really really quickly. Other really important things to bear in mind, it's not just about having sex at the right times. I would recommend that you look at changing your lifestyle, potentially if you need to. So I personally had to massively cut down on my caffeine intake. Um, it's recommended when you're pregnant not to have more than 200 milligrams per day, which is about two instant coffees. Just one flat white from Costa is over 200 milligrams of, coffee, of caffeine. So it's definitely something to bear in mind. Other things like smoking, super important to stop smoking. There's no safe level of smoking when pregnant and smoking is known to reduce your fertility, not only for you, but for your partner as well. It will reduce their sperm quality. So if there's one thing I can get you to stop, it would be smoking, along with, of course, alcohol intake. Ideally, absolutely no alcohol intake while trying to conceive. And then, especially while you're pregnant, no alcohol intake. 
taking prenatal vitamins is a really good idea. I personally took Pregnacare before conception. Um, obviously this is a brand, it's more expensive than if you got um, Boots version for example, so that's totally up to you what you want to get. The main important things in here are folic acid, it's really really good to take um, a prenatal vitamin that includes folic acid to try and get your levels higher for when you do conceive. Folic acid in pregnancy helps reduce the risk of brain and spinal cord defects such as spina bifida and since they've been recommending that pregnant women take folic acid the rates of spina bifida have dramatically dropped so if there's one thing that you're going to take throughout your pregnancy it would definitely be folic acid. You can take it completely on its own um, just because these tablets are quite large I never had a problem with them personally but um, women that I've looked after, lots of them have told me that they make them sick, they really struggle to take them, so worst case scenario, just take folic acid. But I would recommend starting some prenatals before you even get pregnant. So, then when it comes to actually tracking your cycles, um, I'm just gonna read a little bit off my phone from the NHS website. Um, when I say tracking your cycle, you're tracking your, your period, your menstrual cycle. So each cycle um, is counted from the first day of a woman's period, and then, it ends the day before they start their next period. So on average, most cycles are about 28 days. That's a very average basic um, cycle length. And you tend to ovulate at between days 12 to 16. So if you were textbook, you would ovulate on 14 days after you started your period. Um, so this is basically two weeks later, and then two weeks after that, you would start your next period. What's really interesting about trying to conceive is, you may well have already experienced it yourself, you spend, it feels like you spend your whole life trying not to get pregnant and then, and everyone telling you that you can get pregnant willy-nilly, which you can, that is true. Um, but then when you actually want to get pregnant, you realise that it's really, really difficult and it's a lot more than just luck. It takes a lot of planning, potentially, not for everyone. So back to the Ovia Fertility app. So the app allows you to track lots of your symptoms, um, including your mood, which um, is definitely a symptom of lots of people's uh, point in their cycle. I, I would say the main ones that I used personally was the cervical fluid. So that's a really, really great, great way of tracking your fertility. So when you're not fertile, you'll either have no cervical fluid. So this is basically the discharge that you see on your pants. Sorry to be very blatant about it, but just so you fully understand, um, this, is, this is discharge basically. But this discharge actually comes from the cervix, which is at the top of the vagina, and it's the opening um, to your uterus, so it's the neck of the womb. Um, your cervix is what holds your baby in your womb, and what opens, what, what opens when you're term, to allow you to labour and um, birth your baby. So your cervix releases lots of fluid to keep it clean, to keep it... Sorry, my dog's just dropping his bone on the floor. Um, to keep, kind of keep it clean, keep it lubricated, and when you're not fertile, you'll either have no cervical fluid at all, or it'll be very dry and sticky. You'll find as you come to the more fertile point of your cycle, um, it may become completely clear and liquidy, and then when it becomes stretchy, so it's literally called egg whites, so in theory, you could put some in your fingers and stretch it between your fingers, and it will actually stretch, like an egg white. So that's the... We'll just let him play for a sec. Come on, babes. Come here. Come here, come on. Come on. Come say hi. Say hi. Say hi. This is my little boy. My original little boy. Rufus. Anyway, sit down, babes. So, <laughs> he's just gonna sit on my lap now, so I hope you don't mind that. That is a really great way of tracking your fertility because you will have super stretchy egg white cervical fluid when you're fertile. It's because the your body is releasing fertile cervical mucus. It helps carry the sperm through the vagina into the cervix and into the womb. And that's the kind of process behind it. Whereas the dry mucus is f to kind of stop the sperm being able to go up, if that makes sense. Very much in layman's terms here, guys. The other thing that I would say is was my biggest, biggest help, it's helped so many of my friends as well, is using ovulation sticks. I do understand a lot of people feel hesitant about doing this because they don't want to take this so 
seriously they don't want it to become like a job you know tracking your fertility isn't enjoyable anymore it's something that you have to do every day that's totally fine if this is something that you think would give you anxiety and stress then don't do it but personally i am very much a planner i like to know everything every detail in and out if i'm going to do something i'm going to do it right and i'm going to do it in the best way possible so i use two different types of ovulation sticks Initially I bought some cheapies from Amazon, I think it was about £5 for a huge amount, maybe 50 So they look like this, I will open up one up for you. So they are called the One Step Ovulation Tests and they are in a little foil packet and they look like this. I will insert a couple of pictures of me when I used to use these. I personally, so you, the idea is that you wee in some kind of container and you dip this in your urine up to the mark, you hold it for 10 seconds, then the urine comes up through here and you get a control line and a line testing for the luteinizing hormone. This is a hormone that your body releases when it's preparing to release an egg. I am not um, a fertility specialist, so although I am medically trained, um, and I am a midwife, I, I am not a fertility specialist. So please, like I said, do not take this as my personal advice to you. This is just advice on what I did and my understanding of it. So my issue with this was that I never had a fully positive test at any point. Um, I was using this for maybe three months because I used it before we actually were trying just because I wanted to get to know my cycles. And personally, the line never went positive. To go fully positive, your test line has to be darker than your control line. Often I could see a test line, but it was never darker than the control line. So I felt quite frustrated with this because I would have several days where I could see a test line, but it was never positive. I didn't really know what was going on. I spoke to a friend about it and she advised to get the clear blue ovulation tests. This is the advanced, advanced digital. So there are 10 tests in here. And just to show you how effective this was, because I do believe that this was what did it for us. Um, it came with 10 ovulation tests and I still have um, seven left. <laughs> so I literally used it once. <laughs> so you have a digital monitor and you have your pee stick basically. You open this, you pop this inside the monitor and you dip it in your urine again, I believe for 10 seconds, but obviously always check the um, instructions when you do use this. So the idea is as you can see on the front, when you're in low fertility, it just so shows you this circle. When you're in high fertility, it shows you a flashing smiley. So that means that you're, you're very fertile. And then the peak fertility, which means that it has detected that you're going to release an egg, is a static smiley. That static smiley face stays on the screen for two whole days. You cannot test again during that time. So the reason why this particular test is so effective is because it tests for your luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone your body releases when it's releasing an egg or just before it releases an egg. And it also tests for your estrogen levels as well. So that's how it can tell you exactly when you're going to ovulate rather than just you are quite fertile at the moment. Um, as I said, I used this once, got pregnant straight away. So if that's not an advert for this product, then I don't know what is. I also just had a friend tell me today that she had been trying for nearly a year. I think it was around a year she'd been trying for. She finally bought these, realized that she was ovulating at the wrong time, got pregnant straight away. So what do you do with the information when you find out that you're in your peak fertility? If you're wanting to get pregnant, then you need to be having sexual intercourse. You need to be having vaginal sexual intercourse where your partner ejaculates inside. I'm sorry to be very frank about it, but it's amazing how many people get confused with the very basic things that a lot of us think um, are simple. But just to put it exactly how it needs to be said, that's what needs to happen for you to get pregnant. The sperm needs to be in the vagina so that it can be carried up through the cervix into the uterus to the fallopian tubes where an egg that has been ovulated, so it's been released from the ovaries, can be fertilized. So once I knew where my fertile window was, I knew when my fertility was higher and then I knew when my peak fertility was there, um, I made sure that, well, we made sure that we had sex four times out of the five days that was um, in the peak fertility 
you don't need to have sex every single day. You definitely don't need to have sex twice a day. I think having sex every other day is definitely more than enough. Technically, the sperm can live inside of your body for up to a week, but just to improve your chances, if you know that you're fertile on Friday, I would advise having sex at least every other day up to that point for at least five days. Seems silly, but try to keep this lighthearted. It's not a job. Um, if you guys don't want to have sex, don't have sex. This isn't something that needs to be rushed. It doesn't have to be done quickly for everybody. Um, if you are not enjoying the process of having to have really regular sex like that and it being regimented, then don't do it, okay? That it's, it's better for your mental health to do things at your own pace rather than forcefully, you know, make something unnatural happen. Uh, this is just the advice that kind of follows the science and that worked for me personally and it works for loads of others. Other things that can help you are fertility lubrications. So we did use this and whether or not it worked, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I got pregnant. I don't know whether it's because of this. So this is the pre-seed lubrication. I know a lot of people have spoken about this. I got this actually because I was watching YouTube videos on how to get pregnant. So it's a lubrication that is safe for sperm. Um, it comes with these, don't worry, this is unused, <laughs> of course. Um, it comes with these like syringes. So there's a tube of lubrication and then you can pull the lube up, you put that inside and then you deposit the lubrication. It's not like any other lube that you'd know. You don't put it on yourselves and then use it. It has to be kind of inserted inside. The idea of this is to replicate fertile cervical mucus to help carry the sperm to the cervix and into the, into the uterus. Another technique that I used from watching lots of videos and getting lots of information about how to get pregnant was after having sex and um, your partner has ejaculated to try and keep your legs up, keep your pelvis slightly tilted so that you're keeping the um, semen inside for about 15 minutes. So I did this every time and I got pregnant straight away. I must also say though, if you are prone to getting UTIs, don't do this. You're better off going straight to the toilet, having a wee and cleaning up to prevent yourself getting UTI than you are to try and stay there and keep everything inside and becoming unwell. So that's just a disclaimer there. So personally, we tried to conceive for two months. We got pregnant on the second month of conceiving, trying to conceive. The first month, like I said, I didn't use these clear blue ovulation sticks. We just went with my tracking. I tried to use the other ovulation sticks, which didn't work. So I didn't really have any of that. I just tried to use fertility tracking. I had been off contraception for August, um, I think two months at that point so that I could kind of let my body settle down. I tried to see what my cycles were doing because they were irregular when I first came off my contraception. Once they got back to normal, they were, I, I personally have a 28 day cycle. And if the clear blue ovulation sticks are right, I ovulate on day 14, so very much textbook. If you have irregular periods, if you have any conditions like polycystic ovaries, there's lots of other conditions as well, but that's just one particular one that can affect your fertility. It's good to know that you, you, you may ovulate at, at completely irregular times and you can't predict it every month. That's usually one of the reasons why it takes people with those conditions longer to conceive. In the UK, the NHS won't really get involved to help you with fertility treatment unless you've been trying for at least a year. Unless you have a diagnosed condition that affects your fertility, you can go to your GP at six months. I just thought I'd pop that in so that you guys know and that you're not kind of trying for years and years there is help available to you. So yeah, I ovulated on a Friday and we made sure that we had sex four days during that week. I then um, had, well, I don't wanna to talk too much about it because I would like to make a little video about when we found out that we were expecting, but we found out that we were pregnant four days before my period was due, I believe. So it was 11 DPO, which I know is trying to conceive language, it's jargon. It's 11 days post ovulation. So I wasn't even due my period yet at that point. Um, and that was super duper exciting. I really hope that was helpful to you guys. This is derived from a lot of my personal experience and my professional experience. And I'm just hoping that anyone who's watched this has maybe learned something. Hopefully there's a little something in there that you've learned and it will help you guys on your journey to trying to conceive. 
Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Any questions, please leave them in the comment box down below and I will get back to you. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed and it's been useful. You've learned a little something, something. Um, but yeah, good luck to all of you. Baby dust to everyone and it will happen. You just need to relax. Oh, one more tip I forgot to say. Try to keep yourself busy. Try to relax, it's so hard. I know I was there and the longer this goes on for, the more difficult it becomes. It is really tough waiting for your period to come, waiting for you to ovulate, waiting, waiting, waiting. But I promise you it's worth it. Time will pass no matter what you do with it. You will get there. Good luck, guys. Bye.